can put your hand up or you can just go for it. I don't know how you guys do it in Russia. Let's go for a hand like up. Like this. Yeah, you got the first one? Uh, I have like a million questions. Alright, so we'll assume you put your hand up and say yes or ask me your question. Um, let's start with the general ones. Um, we were here last year, yes. speaking with uh, Martin about the uh, game, yes. saw the presentation, we saw uh, the video today uh, yeah. with the new build, and I would like to know what, like, uh, maybe some features were cut off from the game uh, in this year, and maybe something you were added. Yeah, we've added a lot more actually, so I'm trying to remember, uh, so the question is, I don't know if you guys heard, which feature did we... Uh, add or which features did we cut from last year? Uh, the answer is we added a ton. It would take us a while to go through them all. Uh, we've worked a lot on the combat. So I'm trying to remember last year we didn't have the dismemberment that you saw. We didn't have people exploding. Uh, and we worked a lot on the, the combat animations as well. So that basically the feature was there, but we just really worked a lot on it. Uh, additional features that are brand new because last year you got to see the boat you got to see the weather system as well didn't you, you had the weather system uh, I'm trying to think actually oh yeah there's a feature we added that you didn't see actually in this presentation or the other one uh, because it's something that happens over time and it's for example say I meet you in the forest and I kill you Example, okay? This guy at the back is like, what the fuck is killing who? No, 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 but say I kill you, your body will produce this smell of a rotting body over time, and monsters that are around will be attracted to that smell. So if I want to kill something specific, like say a ghoul, you know, something that's attracting to rotten meat, I can kill you, and over time your body will decompose and they will probably come. Maybe they won't, maybe they will. It depends if there's any around. Now, if you're not dead, you will still produce a smell, and that will attract other. I'm not calling you stinky, right? <laughs> but they will. You will attract, say, wolves. Wolves, for example, or bears, will not eat rotten bodies. They will. Uh, they will eat fresh meat. So they will then come to you anyway. Um, so we have this thing that allows to. Yeah, basically, it's a lot more organic. You know. Uh, not quite random because we have monsters who know exactly where they are at what time. But if the player learns that, the player is able to use that to his advantage. So there you go. That I think that's one of the many we have. But does that answer your question? Cool. I can give you more later if I remember which ones. Because I'm trying to compare with the previous presentation and this one. But I think this one's a really cool feature because by doing things like say I kill you by accident and you're near a village, ghouls will come to eat you and suddenly they're attacking the villagers and just by killing one guy by a stake, I've created this fucking mess, you know, so you got to think carefully. Will the quest NPCs in the village die as well? And you will lose the... Uh, they, they can, yeah, of course they can die. If they, they can die if they're attacked by creatures, yeah, or other NPCs, they'll die. So, yeah. so you can miss uh, any non-essential quest from the game? Uh, no, if we have uh, quest givers, we, uh, we have a way to work around this. You can't kill them, okay? We don't want you to miss any of the content, and they will always be present. We're talking about non-quest givers, just villagers, people that are not so important. Very minor quests, I believe, if I remember, they might, we might be able to kill them, but I'm not sure. Not you directly, but with monsters, yeah. Hands up, anyone, if you have a question? Young lady, no question? You don't have a question for me, you don't care. Oh. Don't speak English. So sorry, um, I wish I could. Okay, I'll, I'll ask. Alright, another question, go okay, on. Um, in the previous part of the Witcher, Yes. Uh, we had a quest, uh, like a hidden one quest, when you need to go to the ship and find the chest, and then in the next chapter you need to um, continue the quest, 
and then like if you miss the one little glue, you, you can finish the wool's quest presented in the Witcher 3, like quest without the uh, journal, without the um, um, yes. compass. Yes, we have those quests where you need to understand the quest uh, a lot more than say the main one where we will help you, will guide you through the quest. Uh, this one in particular that you've given the example of, we have similar stuff as well when they're just minor quests and it's for you to explore and figure out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Will this quest lead some kind of um, great rewards in the end or they will just be another session? You'll just have to see. You'll just have to see. Uh, some uh, of them are really... Yes. Well, it depends. Uh, different people... Sorry, I'm just keeping track of the time. Uh, different people will have different... Uh, interest. Some people, they will, you know, a piece of armor is really important to them. Others would rather have a little bit of fluff, we call, you know, something that doesn't really affect the gameplay, but is collectible. Maybe there's something that they find interesting, you know. Why do I do? Hello. A little bit to give me a break. Okay, so you guys, do you speak English? It's okay, it's okay. So, so. Do you have a question for me? At the back. Do you have a question? So, so, guy. Really, so, so. Okay, but if you want, maybe we can bring someone in that will translate your questions, maybe translate the answers. This young man at the front has been very helpful so far. He's our unofficial translator. What about it? It's really cool and I'm not allowed to talk to you about it. That's how cool it is. Ah, but right now we're focusing on on uh, Witcher. That's what we came here for. If, if I were to talk to you about Cyberpunk, I'd probably lose my job. You don't want me to lose my job because we have to finish this game. So, trust me, I'd love to talk to you about it. Maybe next year. Can do it, uh, can so, it's a parallel working. Sorry? <laughs> it's a parallel working or... Uh, yeah, we, we have two teams. No, no, we have two teams and uh, some of the guys are on both projects and uh, it makes a match. But right now, in terms of what I meant, we're focusing on Witcher. Is we're focusing with the press on Witcher. That's what I meant, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, at the demonstration, uh, we saw this um, um, swamp gas, which yes. can be uh, united uh, That's with right. magic. Uh, can you give us other examples of the environment? Okay, so you got to see the swamp gas. We have the bees as well. We have uh, insects. We have uh, what else? We have we have barrels, exploding barrels. You got to have exploding barrels. Those are really cool, actually. Uh, what else? But the, the cool thing is, for example, the gas. You can uh, set it on fire, or you can use art, which is your spell that will dissipate it. So there's di always different ways of utilizing. Uh, you know the environment. What else do we have? I'm trying to think. So we got quite a few actually in the presentation. That's it, isn't it? In the presentation, yeah. Because uh, you didn't, you didn't see everything in the surroundings because in the swamps we just go through it very quickly, you know. Um, but in the game we have a few more, if I remember correctly. And my microphone is going off, isn't it? It's going on and off. Sorry, I think the batteries are dying. But yeah, that's it. Um, I didn't saw the was a magic where you can trap an enemies in previous games. I didn't saw it. Ah, right, it and and we didn't use it. We didn't use it. Yeah, we could have. Yeah. We could have used it. But Wukash will use different spells and so on. But yeah, we've got it. It slows down time as well when you uh, when you walk in it. Uh, that's got different levels as well. All our spells have got different levels, like I was saying, you can 
uh, you know, work on uh, leveling uh, certain spells if that's what you want, if that's what you want to focus on. But yeah, we've got that spell, don't worry, it's just we didn't use it. That's actually a nice topic. Can you go a little more in depth with the um, character development? Like, what you can uh, level apart from the magic? You can be like, I yeah, don't yeah, know, yeah. sword fighter or just that's you know, right, yeah, you can yourself up? That's right, you can uh, have uh, additional moves as well, I believe. You can have, basically, and you've got alchemy as well. So there's three main groups, and within those groups we've got a massive tree. And it would take me a while to just explain to you all the, uh, you know, the upgrades you can have for your character. But basically you have the focus on combat with a sword, magic, uh, which is pretty straightforward, you know, or alchemy which will allow you to create more potions as well as items and that also can be very, 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 very powerful. Oh yeah, in the, in the swords. But the tree, actually they're adding more stuff still, I believe. We're still adding more stuff right now because we we, we have people that will come to our desk and say, would it be cool if you could do that? You go, all right, okay, yeah, so let's have a thing. That, that goes here, and it takes you X hours of gameplay before you can unlock it. So, yeah, three main branches, loads of cool stuff in each one of them. Do we have any uh, mounted combat? Yes, we have mounted combat. You saw in the trailer, I don't know if you saw at the end, uh, when you're on horseback, you can just swoop, you know, swoop down and cut people's heads uh, and you can fight other people that are also on horseback or you can use your crossbow oh crossbow that you saw in there so you can just go really fast and just go and then pick someone in the distance and then just carry on so yeah lots of combat um, does the disembarkment animations are pre-made for every character or the generated? dismemberment no dismemberment we got uh, a few pre-cuts, quite a few pre-cuts, and depending on the angle or the move that you pull, it will slice so it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. It's based on yeah, and diagonal, and we got a lot more. So it, it it doesn't repeat so much, but also there's something we need to point out that I didn't mention in the presentation, which is we're playing on easy. We're playing on easy because we don't want to you die in front die. of you. He almost died, but I don't know if you saw he used the potion at the very beginning where and after yeah he almost died because that werewolf is really tough and it's we're on easy. You forgot to use it in the demo, we used the bomb and we had it in the inventory. When you were we playing, it's possible that you might not have the bomb and then you HP will regenerate very fast, so we have to deal with That's right. Can you just out-damage? Uh, can you just out-damage? You, you, yes, you, you could, you could, you could. As you can see, it was very hard because it was regenerating. But that was the point of this. We've decided to, sh to do it that way. We had a quick chat before the presentation, and we thought, okay, we want to show them what happens when you are not prepared, when you haven't done your research and you don't have the item. Because the problem is that when we do the presentation and we throw the bomb and we kill the guy, the werewolf, people say to us, it's too easy. Like, well, it's too easy because one, it's an easy, and two, we're, we're well prepared. We've got all the information we wanted. So now we want to show the players what happens when you go in there and you're not prepared, and it's not easy. And as you saw, the guy that is really good at the game, trust me, Wolkash is the best we have, that's why they send him with me. He almost fucking died, so there you go. All good, anyone else? <laughs> yes, go on. В первой части наш герой по большей части придерживался нейтралитета. Во второй же у нас не было выбора, нам приходилось присоединиться к одной либо к другой стороне. А в третьей части сможем ли мы выбрать нейтральную позицию? Okay. Um, in the first game, uh, girl was staying uh, in a neutral position, doesn't join any factions. And uh, in the second game, we were forced to choose between factions. Um, All right, we were yeah. still able to stay neutral at the wild hunt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is something that fans mentioned a lot. Uh, this is... It's going to be a theme. It's not going to be with all the quests, as far as I can remember. But as a, as a witch, uh, you can now stay more neutral 
and then we have outcomes that maybe made you will make you wish you had picked uh, not a side. You know, we don't have in this game. We, we're not going to do what happened in the second one when you it branches out and it's like this is one part of the game that you're not going to see if you pick the other one, right? Do you remember when you did when you had to pick with the elves or yeah? Uh, we're not having this at all. Because we're dealing with an open world, so we can't just say, okay, we're locking this area and we're opening this one for you guys. Instead, it's most of small choices, and most of them you can be neutral as well. Yeah, so that's the point. Anyone else at the back? Uh, so, we know that uh, Witcher is coming out uh, on Sony and Microsoft console, but uh, yes. what about uh, Nintendo? Will any uh, like spin off games or something uh, about Witcher come out? I don't think Nintendo will allow us to do any spin-offs, considering how we work and and uh, and the world of The Witcher. I don't think it really fits with Nintendo anyway. I think they would never they would look at whatever stuff we come up with. They'd be like, "There's tits everywhere, there's blood and monsters," and you just Nintendo doesn't like that usually. I mean, I might be wrong, but anyway, our plan is not to deal with these guys. Good question. Interesting question, actually. Uh, they would kill us. They actually allow the major content now. Sorry? I, I believe they're now allowing the major content or the platform. Yeah? Yeah, they want to go away from the child consoles. But anyway, you can try if you want. Yeah, but it's not it's not our goal. We don't we don't want to do spin-offs, you know, we just just this is the end of the trilogy, there's no reason for us to just Try and make something on the side if it doesn't make sense. You know? Future platformer game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not what we else. do, man. <laughs> do you want to add something to that? Do you want to go for Nintendo? <laughs> Would you have okay, yes. So, so, Sorry, mate. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll answer you in a second. Uh, Герой раскачивается персонаж, и как бы под конец или в середине становится как бы легко же убивать система. Ну, не проработана, и как бы монстры слишком легкие, и как бы ну, неинтересно сражаться. Как у вас вот, вот, сложности под конец игры? Um, you have a vast open world in your game, yes. and uh, um, people can uh, level up, like power level, and uh, have uh, more levels and mobs have like a lot more ending game becomes too easy. Um, how you address this problem? Well, we got a level cap. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what the max level is. Because it's for you to find out. But what we do is you will always have things around you that will be much stronger than you. You will never be overpowered. Uh, something that we do do is that the monsters don't level, they don't scale with you. That's something I mentioned in the presentation. I think that's pretty important because what happens is that with the open world, um, we wanted you to just go and explore and always be a bit scared of what you're going to find. Why? Because, uh, like I said, there's always huge monsters around you, really high level. Um, but also at the same time, we wanted to reward you because if you're really good at the game and you can go and you can kill the... Say you're level 2, you come across something that's level 8, 9, 10, usually you would die. But if you're really good at the game, then you're rewarded with the loot and, and so on and so forth. Uh, when you are max level, you will still be able to find monsters, creatures and humans who are much higher level than you. So it is always a challenge. Always. Um, okay, I would like to go further in this question. Um, in many games, even if you're under leveled, uh, you can like find the sweet spot and just I don't know, shoot the boss for like 10 HP per strike and like it will take 3 hours but you will kill him in the end and some games set in like in rage timer or the, if you don't kill the boss at the time you will just wipe every, everyone in the area All like right. do you have uh, some kind of mechanics to prevent the people that are like to abuse? I don't see it as an abuse why is that an abuse? if you spend for example your level 2 you come see the werewolf and it takes you an hour to hack at it, but you manage to survive for an hour. Well, go for it, you win. No, not hack. Like I don't know, jump over the <laughs> boulder and shoot it with the crossbow. Oh no 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 no! That that okay. wouldn't be that wouldn't be an option. Because you could. You, you need to uh, craft the bolts 
Yeah. Basically. You don't have unlimited bolts. If you manage to drop the bolt, then if you manage to kill something because you manage to do it, it's not like that. So the ammo is scarce. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, it depends. If you, honestly, if you spend three hours crafting, finding all the stuff you need to make bolts, and you make enough so that you can go on the high ground and shoot something that just can't get to you, and it takes you a long time because you're low level, so your bolts are going to be low level. You just spend four or five hours just to kill a, a, a huge creature. Go ahead. I don't see this as a cheat. If you spend five hours for it, have the loot. Well done. It's, it's no problem, it's no problem. It's, if that's how you want to enjoy the game, it's not game breaking, it's just you're not using the path or the tools that we thought you would. Go for it, it's no problem, is it? Um, I think you're uh, just uh, don't expect from the player. Like, you play the Dark Souls. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> you, you know a lot of. I know, I know. How people like, yeah. I absolutely know. I'm a gamer too, I play Dark Souls. But I don't, I don't believe in, 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 in stopping. Well, what would we do? We'd stop people from jumping on, uh, on higher grounds, or we'll, we'd cheat and say, okay, well, if you, if a monster has been fighting you for an hour, he will go away because it's clear that you're cheating. I don't restrict players, you know. Let them. This is part of the open world experience. Try and figure out, you know. I think that's totally fine. And I know people will do it. I know people will spend five hours for a monster. As a designer, I'm not gonna punish the rest of the guys just because one dude is gonna do this, you know. Let them explore, let's let them play with the game, it's cool. By the way, about the monsters living. Yes. Um, uh, the last year's demo we saw the giant elf like creature. You were fighting with it and then it's run away and you need to hunt it. Oh yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the uh, fiend, wasn't it? Wasn't it the fiend last year? Uh, was still, yeah, it was the... Oh. Lesh. No, Lesh. No, 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 no. no. Lesh was uh, in the ah, forest. Right. He's talking oh, before yeah. there was Bias, I think. In the ruins. Yeah, I know, but he's talking about Bias that runs away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what about it? Uh, can you talk about a little bit more about the, how many encounters like that will be in the game? Like, and uh, how the hunter himself uh, Games out because uh, we just like were told that you can hunt him, but we yes. were walk the other direction. I'm not going to give you an exact number, uh, not because I don't know it, but I, I don't want to spoil it. Because some of them you will come across it, and you didn't know you could hunt those big things, those big creatures. It stays the same. Yeah, I'll be with you in a sec. I'm just uh, finishing this one, um, and actually I need to go back to you, don't I? So we'll do this. All right, sorry. Will be quick. So yeah, it, it hasn't changed. It's the same. You know, you uh, this, there is something that triggers the hunt, whether it's you seeing the monster, someone telling you that there is a monster, or maybe an item that triggers it, and it's your choice whether or not you want to carry on. Uh, one that we did show was the Griffin. The Griffin is we only showed the end of it, where you shoot it with a bolt that makes the creature bleed, and as you follow it through the forest, you follow the blood and then you find it and then hopefully you can kill it. And in fact, that's what the, we saw at the beginning, your big head near the horse, the head of the griffin, that was just after that quest. Can you prevent the escape of the creature? It depends. It really depends uh, on the creature. Uh, it depends if you manage to fight it right away and they want to attack you or if you just do a bit of damage and they go away. It really varies on each one has got a very specific way of tracking it. You'll see, it's, it's a lot of fun, I really like it. Something you can focus on. Yes, go on. I have a question about future. Uh, so, I guess you said that uh, it is uh, the end of the trilogy. So, what yes. will be the next? Uh, the next trilogy about Geralt or uh, maybe something else? Universe. We still we still have the rights. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. We have no plans for anything else other than we know we're gonna focus on uh, Cyberpunk after that, and we might have some other stuff on the side. Um, but we know it's the end of the trilogy. We don't want to milk it or you know just say hey, actually it's not the end. And then, you know, so right now we're just finishing it. We're happy with the way it, it ends. Uh, we got quite a few endings. 
Uh, and actually, I'm trying to avoid the spoilers. I don't want to know all of the endings. And in fact, I don't know all of them because I still want to play the game. Uh, quite a few, quite, quite a few people in the office actually won't play all of the quests, apart from the quest designers, of course. You haven't played any quests, did you? Oh, yeah, because you focus on the yeah. Wukash is a gameplay uh, tester, so he focuses on the fighting mechanics and so on. And in fact, he, he hasn't played any quest, uh, and that's uh, I think it's awesome because I've worked on many games before with other studios where I just did not want to touch a pad and play that game at all because I was sick of it. This one, I'm going to play it. I'm going to finish the trilogy, and I'll be happy with it. And if we have any plans, I'm sure we'll let you know. All right, man. Yes, finally. Hello. I'm sorry about this man here. About getting what? <laughs> about getting drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because are you referring to the quest in the second one where you get drunk and then you wake up with a tattoo? Is that what you want to know? Can you still get drunk with your friends and wake up with tattoos in weird places? I can't say anything. Tell him that his job. Uh, no, with drinking, we don't know. We've added some new mini games that we started from scratch with three. Uh, one of them is called Gwent. It's a card game. Uh, actually, I designed it, so I'm quite proud of it. Uh, we we offer a physical copy of the game Gwent, the card game, with the Xbox One version but the Gwen, the Gwen game itself of course is on all the platform and that was a little um, hint to Witcher 1 that had collectible card games with the beautiful ladies on them so it was a little hint but this is different it's a card game that you play with uh, NPCs throughout the world it's a deck building game you need to find cards you need to fight for them others you need to buy them and you create your deck and you play with NPCs throughout the world so that's one of our really main mini game that is totally unique uh, as far as drinking to go back to your friend's uh, question tell him that you're gonna need to go in the bars and get drunk and see what happens I'm not, I don't want to spoil the fun for him you never know what happens when you get drunk so I'm not gonna tell him all right any more questions about alcohol <laughs> Go on, hardwire. About what? Sorry, we got ten minutes. About hardwire. Uh, what kind of um, PC requirements should we expect for oh, playing man. the uh, ultra settings? I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know yet. Why? Because we're still working on optimizing it. We've got the rendering guys uh, back in the office. They're working really hard on optimizing everything. The art team as well. So the requir requirements are changing often, and actually. You know, lowering a uh, it really varies. It really varies. What is the demo specs? Uh, this one to make sure that it gives you uh, you know the best we've got. We got a Titan in there uh, from Nvidia. It's the biggest we could get. It's, you don't need that, but we have one to make sure that everything's fine. Actually, we've optimized the game a lot more since uh, we grabbed this uh, this build. So the game is a lot better now, isn't it? Actually, because we grabbed this one. A while ago, uh, got the Russian version because we knew we were going to go to Russia, so we grabbed it. And then since then, it's just. But at work on my machine, I've got like a GTX five something. I forgot the IT guy gave it to me. So you need like a good computer if you want to run everything on high. But to run it normal, it's as powerful as the most powerful PCs, are they? So, so there you go. If you want exact numbers, I can give you that. В первой части игры, большинство, ну не то что большинство, а достаточно приличное количество локаций были выполнены в атмосфере таких древнеславянских сказок. Будет ли в третьей части больше таких локаций? Um, in the first game there was a lot of locations that were resembled the Slavic mythology. Yes. Uh, will there be any kind of locations like that in the yes. world? Yes, in fact, so last year we showed Another part of our world, which uses a lot more Nordic influence, so Vikings and all that, that's the one that you saw. The one that you saw today, that's 
in no man's land that is the more slavic uh, area uh, the monsters are also based on slavic uh, myth you know mythology and uh, it's the theme that you saw is like where we are very slavic indeed yeah so, Yeah, yeah, the Baba, you, Baba Yaga, or do you have similar, yeah? Well, those three girls, uh, three girls, women, were based on this, and you saw the orphans, so, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but... There's a lot of influence on ideas that they collect to their game, and yeah, yeah. as seen as nothing in our culture, uh, it's more than the Western Oh yeah, absolutely. Not just, like I said, not just the characters, but the environment as well. Those three witches are awesome. I love them. I love the one with the basket as well. She's my favorite one. She is sexy. Well, yeah, it's our Baba, Baba Yaga influence. So you guys got the same, I guess, yeah? You, you call yeah, it the same? Yeah, yeah. But there you go. You'll see, when you play that quest, remember what I've just told you, because you will see the link, and I assume it's the same story, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. And this is something that you'll see throughout the game as well. Our Baba Yaga have the house and the chicken, <laughs> chicken legs. Chicken legs. Yeah? Awesome yeah. chicken legs. <laughs> well, I was got a house. Which turns <laughs> to the forest. Yeah, so yeah. Got, yeah. So it, it turns around. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. She got chicken legs. Yeah. Chicken legs. Uh, the house had a chicken leg. In Poland as well? Yes. Well, there you go. You guys... I'm not from Poland. Just, I mean, I live in Poland, but originally I'm from France. We don't have Baba Yaga with chicken legs. <laughs> Alright, I trust you. Anyone else? Do you have, I think we've got like five minutes. Maybe you tell us a little about the uh, development process, how many people... Okay, so good question. So, development process right now we've got about, say, 200 devs. Uh, bigger team than which two? Uh, the biggest challenge was probably working on the open world. Obviously, it's massive, it's a lot more work, and we, we wanted to make sure that just like in Witcher 2, everything looked perfect. Um, so we had to be very, very organized. We have broken down our worlds into regions, and even though we don't have any loading time in between them, we had to make sure that we understood, okay, this is the swamps, and this is this, and so on. And basically, we just go and approach each area, with what we call strike teams. So strike teams is, for example, for me as a designer, we'll look at an area and we'll say, okay, what's the story behind the area? What sort of characters would I see in there? We work with the quest guys, and the quest guys want to place their quest all within a theme as well. And then we have the art team that comes in and they speak to us and they say, okay, what's the feel in this area? And we explain to them and so on and so forth. And so we focus heavily on one area and then we move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And we have the uh, testers that, that also work like this. So as we move through the world, they will do a pass behind us and give, give us some feedback and say, you know, maybe this doesn't make sense. And so we go back and forth. But you have to be super organized. So otherwise, a world like this, it's huge. Huge, huge, huge. It's like, uh, if we were to put everything together, 16 square kilometer, I think. A bit more, a bit more than that. So, if we were to put everything, it's 16 by 16. It's massive. So, yeah, massive challenge. Right now, the team is back in Warsaw, polishing everything. Uh, like I was saying, in fact, the areas. So we go back again. We do another pass. We make sure that it's beautiful. We make sure that everything makes sense as well from a quest point of view and gameplay as well. If we believe that some monsters should never appear in a certain area, we'll shift them around and so on. It's tough. I'm not going to lie to you, it's really, really difficult. It's a big challenge, but it's worth it. It's the last one in the trilogy, so we're just doing our best. Does that make sense? And are you happy with that answer? Good. And if you're happy, I'm happy. Again, I'm sorry I don't speak Russian, guys. 
Okay, all right, listen. You understand. You're saying you don't understand English, but you just understood what I said. Um, just a lot, a lot of people can speak, but pretty much. I understand, read. I understand. Yeah, I know, I know. It's the same, at least with me in Russian. See, I can't speak it, I can't read it. So there you have it. I can't do any of those things. Uh, thanks very much for coming. If you need anything, please speak to some of the ladies on our booth. Don't forget to get a picture taken with our cosplayers, because they look. Geralt is awesome. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. You're awesome.